Uh, it's amazing, man. It's everything I dreamed about. Uh, you know, when I was trying to make it to the UFC, uh, like you said, things didn't go how I planned. Um, some close decision losses and things like that. Uh, some setbacks and adversity, but I pride myself on being resilient, man. So I feel like, um, you know, it's happening when it's supposed to, man. Did you feel like you were on the, on the you know, ready for this, that a main event was coming your way? Yeah, I felt like, um, you know, I've been preparing myself. As you know, like I changed gyms. I, I switched a lot of things in my personal life for that reason. I knew it was going to be hard, but I knew I, I knew it was something else out there for me and some other things I needed to do in my career. So I had to make those decisions. And here we are, man. I'm excited, man. I can't wait. If I'm not mistaken, you were offered this fight like shortly after your last fight. Like you knew about this for a while, but had to keep it top secret. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I found out, um, I think like literally like a week or two after I fought Alexi, um, they wanted me to fight over him. And it wasn't even a wait, let me think. It was yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like I've always said, I pride myself on being a company man. And um, fighting over him is an opportunity that I've always wanted, you know what I mean? I watched this guy fight before I ever put a pair of gloves on. So to be able to step in the octagon and compete against somebody who is, uh, you know, widely considered a legend is a great moment for me, you know? And I think it's my time, so I'm gonna go in there and, and, and take him out. It's rare to have a second stint in the UFC and be very successful. Was there a point you thought this might not happen where you'd achieve, get to this level? Yeah, man, uh, literally right after they cut me. Um, because I felt like, you know, at the time I was, you know, kind of highly touted and everybody had so many high expectations for me. Um, but at the time I wasn't mentally prepared for it. And, and I think I went through what I went through to teach me how to be prepared right now. And last one for me, I know you're a big hockey fan. Did you go to the Bruins game last night? I did not, man. I, I talked to a few people and uh, I was trying to get in there, but it was, uh, you know, some other things going on. I had to hang out with my boy Charles Rosa. Congratulations, by the way, big win. Uh, welcome back. Um, so no, I didn't get a chance to go check it out. What about Overeem makes you such a fan of his? Or... Um, it was just the, the way he fought. You know, at the time, I, I didn't really know a lot about striking, but I enjoyed watching him strike. You know, I watched him, you know, fight in different weight classes and fight all the best guys in this in pride. And that's what I knew at the time was pride. I was like, damn, I don't want to fight in pride ever. <laughs> but I was like, you know, I was watching it. I had it on DVD and all those things. And so it's kind of surreal, honestly, to be in this situation, to be fighting him. But at the same time, I got a job to do, man. and, I, and I've been preparing for this moment for a long, long time. Well, like, yeah, so you mentioned being surreal. I was going to ask, like, is, it, is that going to be a weird experience? Are you going to have to check yourself a little bit? Like, nah, I'm going to tell you the only time I felt that was our Orlovsky fight I did. I was like, oh, man, like, this is the pit bull. You know what I mean? Like, he, he did one of these, and I saw the mouthpiece. I was like, holy crap. Like, <laughs> I remember watching him, you know, blitz across the cage. Like, I'm, you know. But now it's like I belong here. I feel like I'm in my spot where I'm supposed to be, and it's only up from here for me. You spoke about when you were released by like, losing a bit of confidence. Now you're in there against people like Overeem. Is that just thing like, yeah, I'm meant to be here. Exactly. Be in here exactly. It's just real reaffirmation, man. Um, when I got cut the first time, even after losses, like, there's always that moment where you're just like, I, this ain't it. Like, I, I remember distinctly after losing to Krylov, I was sitting in the doctor's bay and I told my coaches, I'm done. I was unwrapping my gloves and I was like, you know, I, I can't do this. Like, I, I got in over my head is what I thought at the moment. And, and it, it, fighters are emotional after a, a loss, um, especially a loss like that where I was a four to one favorite and he clipped me in like 25 seconds, you know what I mean? So um, it, did, it shook my confidence, but I'm resilient as hell, man. Like I don't ever quit, I don't ever give up. I might lick my wounds for a little bit, but I can guarantee you I'm gonna always come back harder and stronger, faster, better. Knowing that you can do that, you had to do it before. That it almost help you, you know, like, listen, some will always rise again the day after. So, yeah. You know, losses don't necessarily kill you like they perhaps go from the past. Yeah, I, I think, um, of course, at this point of my career, I don't want to lose. Nobody wants to ever, but um, I just feel like I've been there. You know what I mean? What's, what could be worse? You know what I mean? You've done things that people where I'm from don't get an opportunity to do, so I'm proud of that. You know, when I'm training every day, I carry that. You know what I'm saying? I see how the city responds to me getting main event, uh, you know, opportunities. And, um, you know, it means a lot to me, not only me, but my city, my my my, fr my fans, my friends. Um, so, yeah, I, I carry that everywhere I go, man. I'm just happy to be here, honestly, man, you know, but I'm here to take over for sure. So, Overeem has over 60 professional fights. It's fair to say he's seen it all. So, what do you bring? Hey, he ain't seen me. I can guarantee you go back through his log and you have never seen a guy that fought him like I'm going to fight him December 7th or a guy that even presents the challenges that I present to him. Um, you know, like I said, I respect Overeem. I have a, a, a utmost respect for him, but every dog's got his day. And, and, and I feel like it's my time, it's my turn to 
step into that spotlight and, and be what I'm supposed to be. I'm ready for success, man. So. Where does, a, where does a win over Overeem put you in the overall landscape of this division? Now, obviously, we get away for, for C Bay and DC and right Yeah, of course. Um, I mean, somebody sent me an article today where Nagano was uh, a little bit frustrated. Um, he mentioned my name. That's a fight I've always wanted. So, um, you know, I go in there when I get the win over Overeem. Fighting him would be a good. Uh, uh, <laughs> that put me at the at the cusp of doing <laughs> what I came here to do. You feel me? So, um, him, uh, Derek Lewis, any of them, man, all these heavyweights. Um, I feel like I match up well with all of them, and, and I bring something to the table that they're gonna have to really, really grind and get themselves ready for. So, Walt, you you have a plan for, you know, you said Overeem, Nagano, mm -hmm. title shot. Whatever. I mean, honestly, it's I want to go up from here. So. All right. John Jones has been rumored going up to heavyweight for a while now. Yeah, I'm see sure you probably go. take that fight. Right? Ah, of course, I would take the fight. I mean, I've. Hell, I fought Fabricio on like an hour's notice. Like I said, I'll fight anybody. I love John to death. We're friends. Um, but yeah, if he if he comes up, let's get it. You know why, what I'm saying? Why do you have the style to beat him? Because I'm me. And, and I'm going to get in his face. I'm big like he is. I'm long like he is. So I think he he would have you know some issues with me in that, in that respect. You trained with Eric Anders all the time. He's one of your closest friends. Brandon Allen said, yeah, he called out Eric Anders. How do you feel? Who about did? Uh, Brandon Allen, who fought tonight. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, a, oh, that's an old beef. Uh, Eric beat him in LFA, so I feel that. You know what I'm saying? But that ain't what he want right now. Eric's a whole different breed, man. So, you know, big up to him for getting the win tonight, but that ain't the move. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now. Well, you're clearly an improved fighter. What do you think were the biggest changes you made? Were they mental? Were they yeah. strategy? Were they were they just your skill set? Let me know. Um, it them. was a little bit of all of that. Um, I was in, honestly in a situation uh, when I first got into the UFC where I couldn't, I didn't have an outlet to train every day like a professional. And um, I was tied to that situation by my own fault with loyalty. And then I woke up one day after a win, I was depressed and I realized what was causing the depression. It was the fact that I couldn't get in the gym and keep growing and keep getting better. And the love for the sport started to die a little bit. I almost retired, honestly. And then Eric called me and he was like, bro, great win, I'm proud of you but get over here. We need you over here. We love you over here. And, and I always had that relationship with them. I would sneak over there and train. So I just pulled the trigger and made it worldwide known that like, hey, I'm leaving this guy and I'm going over here. Things crumble with top teams. So it was perfect timing, man. I believe God does everything for a reason. So I'm here when he wanted me to be here, not when I wanted to be here. Absolutely. How do you feel you measure up against the top guys out there? Ah, uh, man, I'm gonna give them hell. I feel like, um, I, my style, man, I feel like it's something that they haven't been accustomed to. It's, it's you had Canes, you've had, you know, um, all these guys like Brock and these big, you know, I'm a heavyweight with athleticism, speed, power, and I'm only getting better. That's the beauty of uh, my game and what I bring to the table. I started late. I had, uh, you know, kind of a slow process, a progress to get to where I'm at right now, but everything's coming together now. So there's elements of my game that you guys have not gotten to see, but people in the gym are like, holy, you know, people around the sport are like, yo, this kid's like really growing, you know what I mean? So I'm excited just to get a chance to show you guys, man. I, and I feel like I say that every fight, you know what I'm saying? But they end quick, so nobody really gets to see me wrestle. Nobody gets to see me do my jujitsu. So, you know, if it goes where it goes, I'm prepared 110%. Attitude's a big part of it. Yeah, man, I got a supreme confidence right now, man. I, I can run through a wall right now. <laughs> well, you mentioned American Top Team. You were there for a while. Mm -hmm. There's a big beef going on right now. Kobe Covington, Jorge Masvidal, all yeah. that. How do you feel about that? I saw that coming, man. Um, you know, the gym vibe changed. Um, things changed, and, and, and that was kind of what prompted me to make my decision. Uh, to finally just say, you know, I got to move on and do something different. Because it was a point in my career where I felt like I needed that environment. I needed those guys. The junior was in the gym and all these big names. Me and Bigfoot developed a close relationship. Me and Hector developed a close relationship. So it was like, man, I need to be down there. And then I got to a point where I went home because I had to and I realized I don't need that. I'm, I'm, I got to believe in me. You know what I'm saying? I don't need anybody else to tell me I'm good or believe me. Believe in me, I just need to believe in me. And that's kind of where you see right now my confidence it's through the roof because, like I said, I got an outlet every day. I'm training two, three times a day regularly. Literally, post-fight, I go home, celebrate one day, and I'm back in the gym. And I've never done that in my whole career. So um, it's just a special time. I feel like, you know, everything's aligning for me right now. Thank you, guys. I appreciate y'all, man.